Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 5. And afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh. So they told the elders like God has told them to do. Now it's up against Pharaoh. And thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold the feast unto me in the wilderness. We find this in chapter 3, verse 18. And God knew already he's not going to let them go. They never did hold that feast for three days. That feast in the wilderness went 40 over years. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? He's an agnostic. Who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice and let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. So he doesn't know who the Lord is and he's not going to follow the Lord because he's a God. And Egypt has... A whole dashboard of gods. And they said, The Lord God of the Hebrews. Oh, there's, there's. Which God do you serve? I serve the Lord God of the Hebrews. The Jewish people. Has met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert. And sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Least he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Now that's kind of half the message. Because when we go back to 422, let's see what Moses forgot. 422 it says, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Uh oh, forgot that. Well, he's the God of Hebrews. But if I were to say, hey, listen, the God of the Bible, the God that saved me, the God of Hebrews, what's, what's that say? When I say he's specifically Israel, you know, that throws a lot of people in anger. Many people hate the Jews. And I say unto thee, let my son go that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Moses forgot about that one. In his message. You have to tell Pharaoh it's going to cost your child's life. In your rebellion. And the king of Egypt. Said unto him. Them. Moses and Aaron. Wherefore do ye. Moses and Aaron. Let the people from their works. So it looks like the people stopped. It looks like the people said. Well, hey listen. God is this is this. God has heard your affliction. They stop working. They lighten the load or something. Get you to your burdens. Unless he's addressing Moses and Aaron himself. Aaron, you're supposed to be down there doing what you were doing. Moses, you're a fugitive. Now that you're back, get down there and work. And Pharaoh said... Behold, the people of the land now are many, which is true. There have always been many. And ye make them rest. So they're resting from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as hitherto for. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. All right. 
Pharaoh would bring in the material needed to build. As of this day, you're not getting no more deliveries. I'm not. You're going to get them yourself. And the tale of, of the bricks, which they did make, hitherto ye shall lay upon them, ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Now, I don't know what the tale of bricks is, but let's say a round number, 100 bricks a day. You're still going to produce 100 bricks, but now you've got to go get this stuff. He's added more work to them. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. What are vain words? It's the words of God. Moses Aaron came and said, Listen, God has spoken to us. Let us go for a sacrifice. And the agnostic says, Those are vain words. I'm gonna make your hard I'm gonna make your work even harder. Now, Dr. Shaw, S H A W, confirms through his work and study of Egypt that their structures at, at one period were pure brick and straw. And as you would get higher and higher, you know, you start from the bottom, you work your way up. He said they would find makeshift straw. Anything they could find. And when they came to the topmost, they'd find stubble and junk. And the color of the bricks would, would change. So this is a proven archaeology fact. And what Pharaoh is also doing is he's destroying his community, his city. Because we start off with good buildings, good material. Now we're going to lesser and lesser and lesser. And archaeology has proven that. And the taskmasters of the people went out and their officers and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Straw is a rebar. We use steel rebar and concrete today, but that's what straw does. Straw gives it strength. It gives it root. It gives it something to bind to. And if you use concrete without rebar, you don't have enough. It's going to crack. It's going to break within time. Go ye, get you straw where you can find it. He's destroying his own people. He's destroying his own city. So God has already worked upon him. You should go ahead, just build with inferior material. And yet not ought of your work be diminished. What you produced yesterday, you're still going to produce today. It'd be like if you see uh, someone building a building with cement blocks. And the boss comes in and says, listen guys, I ain't going to give you no more cement, but you better build what you're supposed to build today. You built that wall, I expect that wall to be built tomorrow, and go get your own cement. Who would be so stupid? What What is the mind of this guy here? Yeah, and the bigger, like I said, the biggest thing, he's diminishing his own kingdom. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And Dr. Shaw recalls that. You look him up on the internet, and uh, Exodus chapter 5 on the internet, and they'll explain to you. And there's some pictures. I mean, if you've ever seen the pictures of the Grand Canyon, you see how there's different layers of the dirt, different colors. Well, you start off good and work your way bad. And then there are some buildings probably just being start to be built with a bad foundation. So, stubble's not a good rebar for clay. It'd be like, okay, people got around for this big uh, building we're going to do in New York City. Here's the cement, and here is your rebar. What is it? And give you a box of uh, paper clips. 
It's the same thing. But God's already now destroying Pharaoh in Egypt. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. Same amount. No difference. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them. Okay, so what we see now, you got Pharaoh. He's the big dude. He's the CEO. Okay? You got taskmasters. They're all the people that sit in the air-conditioned building drinking Coca-Cola and coffee and computers and all that. They come down with the white hard hats. Think they know something. Now you got the children of Israel, the officers. They are the white collars. They're the managers. They're the foremen. And under them you got the workers. Now what we're going to do, what Pharaoh has done here is we will put Israelites in charge of Israelites so they will not be mad at us. They'll be mad at their own people. So the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh taskmasters sent over them, were beaten and demanded. The managers, the bosses, were beaten. By... Egyptians. The slave owners were beating the slaves for not doing work that it, the work is impossible to be done because you are not providing. You need to read slavery in America a little more better to realize things were provided. They're not being provided right now. And remember the Bible says they hate the Hebrews. They hate the shepherds. These orders down from Pharaoh. Like, All right. Okay. Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as hitherto? So they're now two days behind on a building project. It's only going to get worse. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh. You are not a sub the chain of authority. The children of Israel did. The officers, they went right over to Taskmaster. Taskmaster not listening to us? We'll walk right in Pharaoh's presence. That's Bible. Pharaoh, your, your, your men are not listening to us. And came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants. Hey, listen, we'll work for you, Pharaoh. But there's something wrong in the ranks here. Now, maybe you don't know. Maybe the, the taskmaster has been lying to it. But we want to let you know that. And they say unto us, make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten. But the fault is thy own people. Now, they're bringing up the Pharaoh like, hey. Do you realize what's going on here? We will do what you tell us to do. They're obedient to a man that is driving them to do hard, rigor work. We'll do what you're doing, want us to do, but we don't have the means anymore. And do you know what your people are doing? They are not charging Pharaoh. We're going to see that in a minute. America's going wrong. But he said, Ye are idle. Ye are idle. Therefore, ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord, Jehovah. Well, if you want a vacation to go serve your God, you guys got too much time on your hands. You want Sunday off? <laughs> you got to be kidding. Sound familiar with America? Go therefore now and work. And there shall no straw be given you, yet you shall deliver the tale of bricks. When England ruled the world, they allowed the Christians the Sabbath day off. 
And the English found out when we gave the Sabbath day off to the Christians. They spent that day womanizing, drinking, hubbing, and other great English words, but not going to church. This is always interesting. No. So Pharaoh comes up and says, listen, you guys, you're idle. You want to go serve? You want to go serve God? Get down there and do that breaks and do what you're supposed to be doing with the breaks for yesterday and the day before. So now they know. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in an evil case. After it was said, ye shall not minish aught of your bricks of your daily test. All right, this now comes from Pharaoh. These are not the Egyptians alone. This is an order by Pharaoh. We now know. But we got another problem. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way. God's people who want to do right are going to stand in your way. If they do not stand in your way, they're not doing right. I want to sit down and walk, watch the ball game. I don't want you come knocking on my door. I want to sit in the sitting room and look out the window. I don't want you to bring your Bible and and with everybody else to come hear your Bible. I want to parade myself in my bikini and undressed body on the beach. Rather you come up and hand me a piece of paper and try to talk to me about God. I don't want that. And you better let me buy my produce without having you screaming at me. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian too. And God wouldn't do it that way. Moses, Aaron. God's people are now mad at Moses and Aaron. Moses has now been gone to start to be blamed for what God does. The ordaining of Moses and Aaron is, it is your fault. Like what could Moses do? Who stood up in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. So they leave Pharaoh's office or whatever, the old office, I don't know what it is. They will mark the child. They're going back to where their, their place of business is for Pharaoh. And there's Moses and Aaron. They're mad at Moses and Aaron. Moses type of Jesus Christ, they were angry with Jesus Christ. There were times they were going to take stones and stone Jesus. Now, I don't know what the ground of, of Egypt is. I, I wonder if there would have been rocks there. They would pick them up. We've already seen it with sand. I don't know if it's like Florida. Just no rocks. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge. Judge not least to be judged. <laughs> If Moses only had that to quote from. Because you have made our Savior to a whore in the eyes of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's angry with us because of you. God came and spoke to you, and God's going to take care of us. You just made our work a whole lot harder. Thank you very much. Keep your mouth shut and leave us alone. Boy, do I hear that weekly. You ruined the business for us. Well, you didn't have no business today with hurricanes. So I didn't. Are you gonna blame the hurricane on me? You lost money. Somebody will. A whore in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his servants. That's the taskmaster. To put a sword in their hand to slay us. Verse fourteen. They beaten and demanded. I bet you it felt like a sword. And maybe they did kill some too. And Moses returned unto the Lord, Moses, uh oh, and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil and treated this people? Moses, like God, this did not work. Why is it that thou hast sent me? 
For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, <laughs> he has done evil to this people. Worse. Moses is describing this as evil. So the Jews are being treated worse. Neither hast thou delivered thy, pe thy people at all. Now, Moses and God are going to have that argument from now on. They're your people. The people that you brought out of, out of Egypt. Now, Lord, they're your people. This is an argument that God and Moses will have many a time. Now, let's go to chapter 3, verse 19 to close this chapter. Now, I don't know if Moses had a forgetful... But 3.19... I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all of my wonders and will do in the midst of thee. And after that, he will let you go. Moses, you forgot something again. I already told you he wasn't going to do it. And I told you when you do do it, the place is going to be messed up, destroyed. So let's cut out the, the attitude. I've already warned you. So there's there's where it's staying. 